Hey guys, this is Casper with Tape, and today you join me on the launch, no no, the runway, with a uh, another shuttle video, because I've been continuing to work on this, because it's fun, and anyway, the reason I didn't, the problem in the last episode is I couldn't get my shuttle to return, because I didn't design it very well, so that's what I'm working on today, just kind of upgrading, and I've actually put it on a bigger fuel tank, which you'll see later, so it has more payload capability and all that fun stuff, but anyway, we're starting off with this kind of, um, launch just into the air really with uh, a few boosters um, although this kind of goes a little aerodynamically unstable a lot of failures in this video so if you like seeing stuff blow up anyway that went wrong really quickly because the thrust and lift was all messed up and it still had a payload in the cargo bay and stuff so yeah there go the boosters which I separate because it's gonna throw me into the ground so that didn't go great and the lifts all messed up because yeah again there's still a cargo the bunch of cargo in the cargo bay which was dumb of me um, which I think I didn't actually fix until about the third launch, so that was very, very foolish. Um, there go the boosters slamming into stuff, and then I thought, oh yeah, I can pilot this down, and it's fine, but the tailplane was ripped off, so... Yeah, not so great, and now it's just kind of fallen sideways, and is probably, probably not gonna go that well, really. This isn't exactly how you want to land a shuttle, so... Yeah, but anyway, nice cool crash we're about to see. Hopefully the Kerbals will survive if I land it right, but it doesn't really look like I'm gonna, and yeah. Well, everything's dead now, and we kind of just basically fragged the VAB uh, on the, the research center with stuff. Uh, but yeah, we'll have some people clean that up, I guess, and then, uh, you know, move on to the next launch, which hopefully will go slightly better. Um, however, not really, because uh, this actually goes wrong even quicker. <laughs> Um, so yeah, standard, another launch again, I've changed a few things, thought that would help. Um, tilting the right way, it's all going rather well. Um, however, it starts to aerodynamically push itself the other way, because it has wings and things. So yeah, the force of the engines is outweighed by the force of the, uh, force of the, the, the aerodynamic lift. So then it starts to flip out again, and I decouple the boosters, and it smashes everything again. So yeah, even even shorter flight. Anyway, next flight. Um, this is actually probably better. The booster setup's way better. The wing setup's uh, slightly better, but again, the wing setup is now designed for something in the cargo bay, which changes the center of mass. Big oversight on my part, much worse than the shuttle developers um, in real life. Anyway, it flips out, and I do actually manage to salvage the shuttle this time and try to dive towards the ground. However, um, I've actually taken the payload out at this point, so it's aerodynamically unstable without the payload which was probably a bit of a mistake, and this is a four times time accelerate? Yeah, most of these will be from now on. Um, and it's just kind of flipping itself around, trying to figure out what's going on. And I thought RCS might help. Um, but yeah, just spiraling into the ground for a bit of death. But the Kerbal survives, so that's good. That's that's a win. Any any landing you walk away from is a not a, not a crash. So, <laughs> yeah, any, yeah, so that's good, although we've lost three shuttles so far. Anyway, the next one has lots of wings on it to try and keep it more stable, um, and we'll see how this goes. You'll notice the engines aren't firing because it doesn't have it, its external fuel tank, it's just using test boosters. Um, I might include the final test version of this in the in my media fire because I have quite a few craft on there, um, and if ever you want to find craft there, there's lots of stuff. Not all my collaborative warfare stuff because it's so heavily modded, although there is some stuff like my high-speed interceptors and uh, some cool scenarios about attacking boats, which is like mostly stock and things, but I'm not sure if it still works. I did it a long time ago. But anyway, uh, this launch kind of ends the same, and I flip that way and kind of smash myself with the booster, and... Yeah, pretty much the similar fate, I'll hit the ground, but you don't need to see that. Anyway, um, let's do another one, I guess. I've completely forgotten how this one goes. Oh yeah, this uh, the launch of this goes really well. Um, the launch goes pretty much perfectly. I've uh, put a bunch more control surfaces on just to fight the uh, like aerodynamic lift and things. Um, but when I decouple the boosters up here, that's where I put the cut. Yeah, um, now we're diving and you can see it's still aerodynamically unstable when it flies, which is kind of problematic. So, final iteration, I believe, maybe, probably not. Um, no, this is the final iteration, all sped up. I'll just show you the whole thing, because this went quite well. Um, I've left all the wings on, on the boosters, because it is quite useful, but I've moved the wings back down, because now it doesn't, 
need the wings all the way up there, it never really should have, it was a massive oversight on my part, and I'm good at overlooking things because I <laughs> am not a very good rocket designer, although I am pretty impressed that the shuttle works at all. If you didn't see the last video, the shuttle does work, I'm just working on a few things, like landing. Um, anyway, separate those boosters, um, separate quite nicely actually, I like, that wasn't supposed to happen, but I like how they did. Anyway, and then just pretty much follow this kind of parabolic arc, um, and kind of dive and hopefully uh, get myself in a posi position where I can glide back and land on the runway. Uh, I'm not sure how well that'll go because I'm quite far and it'll be a pretty serious turn, but it's pretty much just about trying to glide. Um, so yeah, just a matter of diving and we're going pretty fast now, like Mark 1, which is uh, kind of difficult because uh, the problem with shuttles is they have to kind of fly through loads of different... Um, uh, like uh, Mac, Mac numbers uh, and aerodynamic kind of profiles which kind of screws things up as you can see there it even starts to flip out even though it is aerodynamically stable which is uh, I'm not really sure what that's about I think it's just because I pulled out of the uh, prograde too much but I do regain control um, enough to bring it to well, I've also left it, oh no the SAS is fixed now um, I've uh, bring it into enough control to glide it to the surface. So yeah, this actually does work as a glider, but pretty much only at subsonic speeds. Um, which is fine, because I can just go straight until I'm subsonic and then glide to the runway. It requires a lot of planning, but this only has um, orbital maneuvering engines once it's detached from the launch vehicle. But anyway, for the landing, I will slow down and show you what happened. I would have liked to get back to the runway, because this is quite a delicate vehicle, but I tried landing on grass anyway, because why not? Um, but I touch down kind of hard and everything kind of falls off because those engines are really heavy. So that's something to figure out, but maybe I'll figure it out another day because now we've got an actual launch for some cool stuff just to see if it'll work better on the runway. Anyway, let's go into the launch, four times time accelerated, of course, a staple of most of my videos. And just pretty much the same launch. You'll notice a few different things from the last video if you're really focusing. There's an extra fuel tank on the top, just a small one, um, which provides it a little more uh, delta V and gives it a slightly higher payload capability. It also has um, uh, freaking parachutes on the fuel tank and a probe core on the fuel tank so that I can bring it back because I kind of want to do a good job of reusing this. No parachutes on the boosters because it's kind of superfluous because I can't actually follow them to landing but I might put them on there just for show anyway. There's also a couple of drogue chutes on the uh, shuttle for slowing down on the runway. Not sure how useful they'll be. I use drogues because they're much lighter and I don't need like really big parachutes but anyway uh, just kind of standard launch now, push myself to orbit. Kind of steep, but um, it's fine, it's pretty fixable. This actually with that extra fuel tank is much more stable, it doesn't tend to tip over too much, which is way nicer because the other one used to kind of, you'd have to fight it and trying to stop it flipping, but this one you have to kind of fight to push over the way you want it, which is actually much easier. Um, yeah, you can see down there on the fuel tank now that there is a probe core, however hard, no batteries or um, RTGs, so yeah, probably not gonna land, but uh, I'll keep working on that. I want to make this fully reusable. I'll probably just put some, yeah, parachutes on the boosters for, just for show, and then kind of just figure out how to land this um, uh, this fuel tank. I'm pretty sure it would smash itself anyway with just two parachutes, but it was just a test, really. Um, and I was gonna put a Werner engine and deorbit it, but I, the way I figure it's just way easier just to leave it. Um, with a periaps of about 40 kilometers and aero break it to the surface and then just use the shuttle's orbital maneuvering system to push it all the way to orbit because that's just fuel saving really and I don't have to bring a really heavy Verna engine anyway so that is where I'm leaving it um, so I'm not I'm technically not suborbital but I dip inside the atmosphere at this point so I need to use the shuttle's uh, OMS engines to push myself into a proper orbit and then I'm gonna put myself into a higher orbit because my payload is a space station yeah indeed that's awesome uh, <laughs> Well, it's part of a space station. As you can see here, um, although I actually did decouple it here, but I shouldn't have um, because <laughs> I want to put it somewhere else. So I'm going to just reload and, you know, do the standard thing. Just reload, go back to my proper, um, you know, the place where I want to be and deploy it there because, you know, I don't want to leave it here. It's really hard to rendezvous with something in really low orbit. And I will probably be rendezvousing with shuttles anyway. So yeah, much later, um, after a reload, my uh, RTGs are kind of overheating. I should probably put a radiator or two on the shuttle, but that might make it kind of aerodynamically unstable. I'm not sure, I'll look into it. Or maybe just a fuel cell and some liquid fuel in the wings. Although that would make it way heavier, so probably not going to do that. Anyway, using the OMS, I just push myself up to 150 kilometer apoapsis. And then I'm just going to circularize, obviously, when I get up there. But after I've tried to deorbit the tank, uh, well, you know, just air break the tank, which I probably should have just followed through with and see 
how well it kind of uh, air bricks, but I just kind of left it because it was out of electric charge, so I couldn't pull the chutes or anything. But yeah, I probably should have just left it and seen how it did um, going through uh, re-entry. Because it doesn't have a heat shield or anything. And I don't really want to include one because that would really um, drop my kind of uh, payload capabilities. But yeah, you can see the elect last of the electric charge just kind of bled off there. And that's about when I realized and was just like, I'll leave it for now. Although I probably should have. And it's still there, so I could totally just, you know, um, see how it deal bits off video or just next video or something. Because I'm going to do a few videos on the shuttle. I really like it. Um, this is the Mark II, of course, with its few little changes. But anyway, let's go and put a... Oh, I can't switch while I'm in the atmosphere. Anyway, jump cut to when I can switch and things. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's put ourselves in the right orbit and then just kind of, uh, you know... To just deploy my the first bit of my station. I might construct a full station, might as well. Um, I'm working on making this a, a much heavier lifter because that current payload is about 6.6 .6 tons, and it could probably do eight, I think. Um, and I wanted to get it up to like 20. I'm not sure if that's possible. Maybe I'll use some more boosters, maybe some KW rocketry boosters. I know this is a stock shuttle, but I've already proved that you can make a stock shuttle. And it's not like it's like a really big change if I just use one of the big KW rocketry boosters, which would be awesome because uh, KW rocketry boosters are much bigger and would just give me a little more thrust and power and delta V. Um, and then I'm not sure about those engines. I like those engines. They're really they're pretty good. They're exactly what I need. But if I use bigger ones, then I can use bigger fuel tanks. Um, but I'm not sure. I guess I'll look into it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's just put myself in a proper orbit now. And then uh, well, I'm watching my fuel though, so that I know I have enough to deorbit because it would be pretty terrible to be stuck in space, even in the spacious shuttle. Um, I guess you could open up the cargo bay, have a little space, um, as long as it's airtight, which I assume it would be. Um, uh, yeah, because you could use the real space shuttle's um, cargo bay as a lab if you wanted, I believe. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've heard that. Uh, anyway. Yeah, these are still kind of being quite warm. I didn't really think about RTGs overheating, but, I mean, solar panels do, so I guess big nuclear things would as well. So, yeah, I guess I'll just include a radiator outside of the shuttle. Um, yeah, it's a pretty simple solution. Anyway, now I just need to back away from the payload so that I can, uh, well, you know, deorbit away from it and not slam into it or get clipped by it on... Uh, on kind of my deorbit burn, or I guess just during orbit, because it's going to move around all weirdly, and I haven't really... Well, it's kind of hard to, unless you actually think about it, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what something's going to do. Um, because, um, what was I going to say? Because, you know, how it kind of looks kind of weird how things move in orbit when you're near them, because if it's in a higher orbit, it moves above you and then below you and closer to you, and yeah, orbital, orbital stuff's weird. I do like seeing, um, like, Soyuz's uh, move around the space station just using, like, orbital mechanics, just so they'll change their inclination slightly so they can drop below the station and then come back up and just move around. It's all very cool, and I guess they have a lot of very smart people working out how to use as little fuel as possible, because time is, you have much more time than you do fuel in space. Anyway, let's back away. And then on my first attempt to deorbit, um, I hadn't moved away far enough, so I may have a little bit slammed into the station, um, which I realized about now, realized I wasn't going to be able to dodge, so I just kind of went for it. I was like, yeah, let's just face off, and then I kind of died, so that was kind of stupid of me. Um, <laughs> anyway, there goes this, well, oh no, they didn't die, they just kind of stuck without the shuttle. I guess if they got in that cargo bay, they could do kind of, you know, push it back. Anyway, second attempt. Uh, <laughs> lots of quick loads in this. Lots of failure. Good. It's always nice to have an in-space collision. Uh, well, not nice for the pilots, but nice for the KSP viewers. So yeah, the way I usually do this is just to put my uh, periaps down around the KSC and then glide back, and I usually arrive pretty much where I need to be. Um, that always worked in Ferrum, and I assume this has a relatively similar model as old Ferrum. Um, I haven't used Ferrum Aerospace in ages, but that makes a really, really real model of the... Um, atmosphere, but I do like the new one, it's made a lot more things possible, um, it's just just pretty nice, and it's not so crazy like Ferrum, um, because, yeah, you have to be, well, I used to use Ferrum for solar civilization, and it was kind of fine, it's just kind of difficult. Anyway, I'm just going to speed through this, but show you all of it, and we're just flying over the desert right now, which looks kind of nice, so yeah, I'm just going to glide back, what I should have done really here, is slowed down a bit more with some with some turns, just kind of uh, basically what you do is you turn quite sharply in the upper atmosphere, so you're like broadsiding the atmosphere with the bottom of your 
uh, spacecraft and that'll slow you down a lot before the heat starts um, which will make the heating later much less deadly whereas uh, I didn't I did that a little as you can see here I was making a few little turns to try and slow myself down and the idea is that you weave so you don't change your course overall but you do slow down because there's more wing servers kind of pointed into the atmosphere that's how the shuttle used to do it um, it was obviously done by a very smart computer um, although I have heard a story about some uh, one time when some pilots actually had to do the turns manually and they're all like space sick so it was a pretty risky maneuver um, but yeah it's better just to let computers do things because computers are much more well they, they don't make so many mistakes anyway I deployed the uh, elevons here just in like one down and one up so that they can aero brake uh, well help just kind of be air brakes because I, well, I guess I could deploy the drogues at this point but that would be somewhat foolish and I'd probably hit the mountains or something. But yeah, it's good just to bleed off as much velocity as possible because you can see I'm getting a lot of heating on a lot of parts at this point. It's mostly just exterior nodes like um, RCS ports and drogue chutes and engines and things I really don't want to lose. And then I almost kind of lose control of the aircraft there. Um, I guess it's an aircraft now, so yeah. Um, but I just kind of want to dive into the atmosphere now and really risk it. And I have bled off quite a lot of velocity at this point because I really want to hit the runway as opposed to the sea. Um, but anyway, uh, after a little bit of maneuvering and things, this happens. Uh, I turn too much, flip out, and lose most of my spacecraft, which all just kind of burns up and flies away behind me. So, <laughs> yeah, this is going to be fun. Luckily, the lifting body effect is modeled now, so I can fly this. Um, but it is going to be difficult, and I, I do have a wheel as well, which makes it quite easy. And it, you, I know it looks, says I have two parachutes, which would be good, but they're on the spacecraft, which has flown away, which um, I kind of need, but yeah, this is going to be tricky. Um, <laughs> lots of trouble in this episode, really. I should probably just call this kind of trouble in the dying, I guess. But anyway, I can, I can totally fly this back. I've, I've landed crazier things, actually. Um... But yeah, it's it's got a lot of uh, it's got a lot of surface area. I could probably fly. I pr probably deploy the cargo bay and use the cargo bay things as kind of wings. I'm not sure how well that would work or if it's even modelled because I guess it's not something they have to consider a huge amount. But I'd I'd like to think that it is. I imagine Ferromite. Uh, no, no, no. Ferromite is just kind of considers the biggest area. So yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's kind of difficult to do this because you don't want to bleed off all of your velocity, but you also don't want to dive, so it's re really hard to kind of figure it out because you want to be basically going as laterally as possible when you touch down, especially in this. And you can see the nose cone there is heated up so much. Um, that's actually a composite nose cone made of two parts. Yeah, I guess it is technically a composite nose cone because it's not just one bit. I just like the look of that. And I guess it's two more things to burn up. To stop the um, nose of the space of the capsule heating up, I guess. Um, annoyingly, I've burned out all my monopropellant, so I don't have any RCS control. So it's pretty much just um, torque um, and using the aerodynamics of the body. And I'm actually flying this. If you watch the prograde marker, it's actually raising. I am actually flying this bit of cargo bay, which uh, you know, pretty ballsy. Have to be uh, pretty good. No, if I was pretty good, my spacecraft wouldn't be in pieces. Um, <laughs> You have to, oh, yeah, th this was the problem. I accidentally clicked control from here instead of open the cargo bay, so I lost control, so any chance I did have of landing kind of went away, and then I slammed into the ground. So, yeah, not a great episode, but I made a lot of changes and upgrades and almost got it right, so, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, this has been some nice space shuttling. I'll see you next time.